Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and in another edition of Q&A. And without further ado, let's go. I hope you will review the Pocketbook Color e-readers too. I'd love to hear about them and a comparison between them and these Kobo uh, Color e-readers, especially with the detailed approach you have with reviews. Thank you so much. But I'm not sure that that's going to happen because I have reviewed Pocketbook devices in the past and there's a couple of reasons why this is probably not going to happen. First of all, I don't have any contact with Pocketbook, so I don't get the device, a review sample device to test and send back. So if I'm going to review a Pocketbook, then I need to purchase it for myself. Now, if I'm going to purchase a device for a review, then that device needs to make sense in one of two ways. One way is that this is a device that I would purchase for myself anyway and that I would enjoy using. Pocketbook devices generally do not fall into that category, not because of their quality. Their quality is good and usually their screens and image quality, especially front lights, are excellent. But their software is super slow, super limited and basically an environment that I don't really want to be a part of at all. <laughs> so that leaves the second part which is I would purchase a product to review here on my deep guide to offer to you guys but it needs to make some financial slash business sense and unfortunately pocketbook products don't fall into that category at, uh, either because these are not popular videos these are not popular products so I will never be able to even cash back even a tenth of the cost of purchasing a device like that. So it just doesn't make any sense for me to obtain these devices and make these reviews. How does the ghosting and scrolling compare to Tab X and D Tab Ultra that have BSR? And the question is in relation to the Books Go 10.3. And my answer would be that Books Go 10.3 has better ghosting performance, but at the expense of being slower. The whole point of BSR is that it gives you super amount of speed but at an increased clarity and a greatly increased battery consumption. So I'm very, very happy that the Go 10.3 does not have BSR because it doesn't need it. If what you really need is fast refresh stuff, etc., etc., well, you have the other devices for that. Go 10.3 is not for that, nor is it supposed to pretend to be that question in regards to books go 10.3 can it do handwriting to text can you do calculations on it yes and yes this is in relation to the books go color 7 very interesting thanks for your preview i'd like to buy a color e-reader but i'm not really convinced of the kaleido 3 technology does anyone know if there is something better in the making hmm. in the making yes there are a couple and we've seen a smidge of it in the galley with the gallery tree or gallery tree with the galley uh, uh big me galley device. And there's a couple of other technologies also that are being worked at and those are interesting because they are actually using uh, real color ink cells like cyan, magenta, yellow and uh, black. Because what we've seen in the gallery tree panel on the galley is that it was completely impossible for that device to, di to display any kind of whiteness at all. At best it was yellowish and that makes sense because it's a jumble of all of these little cells and colors that's kind of there and it's really hard to kind of hide them in any way shape or form there are some technologies but none of them are anywhere near the usability of the kaleido tree but even the kaleido tree i would venture a serious question in is it ready for prime time use because we keep seeing the fact that e-ink is in basically not able to produce uh, reliable batches and with consistent quality of Kaleido 3 panels because the issue of missing ink cells or the dead pixel issue is present on every single device for any producer that uses a Kaleido 3 panel. And again, no testing of the writing with the cover to see how the magnets affect the digitizer. Come on now! May I suggest reading the title of the video and adjust your expectations accordingly first? Just a thought. 
How is the ghosting on this being a Books Go Color 7 versus the Kobo Libra Color? I also understand that the colors are better on the books versus the Kobo. Is that true? Uh, no. The colors are better on the Kobo Libra Color. Definitely. It's close, but definitely better on the Kobo Libra Color. And the ghosting is better on Kobo Libra Color as well. Depending on which app you use. In Neo Reader, it doesn't matter if you do do a specific set of settings on the books uh, color go color 7 uh, you can see that in my in-depth review of the device you can see exactly what type of settings to do and then you kind of get perfect ghost free uh, ghosting free performance like you do on the Kobo Libra color but if you're using any third-party app including the Kobo app on the go color 7 then there is a software omission in the book software where we are not allowed to actually set the full refresh method to be depth not normal but depth and that actually is a limitation and then in third-party apps you can get minimum amount of ghosting but never ghost free so hopefully that's something that will be uh, fixed in a coming update but that's the situation as it is now can't wait for your full review voya so tempted to get to to get the go but my note air 1 is still going strong would a note air 3 or the go 10.3 make a significant difference in speed and latency compared with the note air 1 apart from the joy factor you don't have yours anymore i'm aware but what would you reckon in the uh, if you're talking just about latency speed uh, no there wouldn't be such a big difference that you would uh, that that you can justify the purchase however with the go 10.3 you do uh, get the advantage of a 300 ppi screen and due to the lack of the front light the image quality and contrast quality and the clarity and just the overall joy aspect and the usability of the device does shoot up significantly when compared to the Note Air 1 for example. And when you actually compare to the Note Air 3 it does make a big big difference. The only question is what are your priorities right because you are going to be losing that front light and if that's something that you care about or not well only you can know about that. Regarding Books Go 10.3, great video. How's typing on it with a keyboard? Any lag? Well, you can check the uh, in-depth review where I did a full in-depth testing typing session with different keyboards and different modes on the Go 10.3. Uh, the lag, the only lag that you have is associated with the display lag. So basically the bottleneck in this kind of technology is always going to be the e-ink display refresh speed and any any uh, lag that is there for the keyboard is going to be imperceptible simply because of that threshold there. Books go 10.3, 300 ppi, weighs 365 grams, almost exactly the same as the Fujitsu Quaderno 13.3, 207 ppi, 368 grams, which is a lot larger screen. Why same weight? Why couldn't they make it lighter, I wonder? Well, it's actually really simple and it's just a handful of reasons. First reason is the screen that is being used on the Go 10.3 is an HD Carta screen, which means that it's a glass panel. And the Quaderno is using the Mobius flexible screen, which is plastic. So glass is much heavier than a plastic. So the screen is heavier on the Go 10.3 than on the Quaderno. Then we get to the build materials and the build materials on the Go 10.3 are metal, glass and plastic while on the Quaderno we only have plastic all around and again building materials of the body and the shape are heavier than they are on a Quaderno. And lastly, the 10.3, Go 10.3, has a much larger battery than the Quaderno uh, A4 has, and that also adds weight. So when you add all of these elements together, that's why it weighs as much as the larger uh, Quaderno A4. Again, question in regards books to Books Go 10.3. Does this support Apple and Amazon eBooks both with DRM? And if you download the Kindle or Kobo or whatever app, yes, you can just log in with your account and use them as you normally would. Hello, I would like to know if you can create hyperlinked objects that can take you from page to page. Maybe you can do demos of the capabilities of the notes and even audio notes. That would be amazing. Thank you for the review. I think I might actually do a dedicated video on 
some of the note taking capabilities or maybe even a series of videos of basically just like a guide series of videos i simply don't have time i've been planning to do that for a long time but there is simply no time for me to do all of those things so i have to prioritize but sure um yeah you definitely can do you can use it by using the insert uh, functionality so if you go into your notebook here and let's go into the full mode ba -ba -da -ba. there you have your insert options and in the insert options you can choose whether to use a recorder, images, attachments, and there's the links to notes, links to files, links to websites. So that's how you can add those uh, yeah, links to different files, folders, notebooks, etc. Does the Note Air 3 cover work for the Go 10.3? No, it does not. It's a uh, different size, it's different magnetic configuration, everything is different, nothing fits, nothing's good, so you can't use it, so that sucks. All right, and that's it for this edition of Q&A. I hope that you found it uh, interesting, informative, amusing, and or something like that. If you did, please like, subscribe, and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. And also go to the mydeepguide.com slash shop where you can find MDO 24, 25, 26, and MMP. I've done many videos, and this is the last one that I'm recording. So you know the drill, just check out the hyperlinks in the bottom, get more info and see if this is something that is for you or not. And now I'm signing off and no more recording, but now endless hours of editing. Thanks for watching. Bye.